morning, our dear viewers. You're most welcome to the Daktari Show, which airs on Westernal TV. Um, start times can get us on 477, and you can get us on Zook State Light 0073. This is your one stop show on um, matters concerning health, where you get information, education, and uh, regarding healthy diseases, and also matters of concern which can help you and guide your family like to keep safe from getting infections and the diseases. Uh, this is your host, Sandy Junior Tom, a uh, student doing my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing from Moon University. Uh, last week we had uh, we, we started a session uh, regarding uh, reproductive health uh, whereby our guest whom we had uh, talked about uh, matters uh, like uh, the contraceptive methods uh, where she broke them down to the barrier, hormonal and the natural methods. Uh, today we, and she also told us last time that uh, reproductive health is not only about contraceptives, it always goes hand in hand with see, uh, sexually transmitted diseases and the screening uh, of uh, the STIs and the cervical cancers and that raised also a concern. Uh, today we are going to talk about our sexually transmitted diseases and of recent uh, we saw uh, a, a report from who that every day we record one million sexually transmitted diseases daily worldwide and also in Uganda here there is percentage of prevalence of sexually transmitted diseases among uh, females and ladies was found to be in, 20, in women it was 20.6 percent and in men it was 13.6 percent showing that it was more in women than in men. Uh, today our guest will also be able to tell us why is it more prevalent in women. She's going to discuss for us the causes, the preventions, how you can live uh, like uh, with people who have these infections and prevent them, uh, how to manage them, also the complications in case you fail to abide to get these treatment methods. With me here is our guest. Uh, you're most welcome, madam. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with you, the viewers of Westnail TV. Uh, my name is Farida Farouk. Uh, Muni University student nurse doing my bachelor's in nursing and midwifery. I have been practicing at Arua Regional Referral Hospital and we, I'm so happy that we're going to go through this session together with you. Uh, today's topic is sexually transmitted infections and it's what we're going to be discussing. I want us to understand what sexually transmitted infections are and how we can differentiate them from other infections. Infections are many where we have the urinary tract infections but specifically we are going to talk about the sexually transmitted infections. Like our host here said, sexually transmitted infections, research shows that every day more than one million people worldwide are getting sexually transmitted infections so from the word sexually transmitted infections you just know that this is an infection you acquire from your partner through unprotected sexual intercourse if the sex activity you're having is protected you cannot get the what sexually transmitted infections but since most times we engage into sexual activities that are unprotected we always find out that we get the sexually transmitted infections all right thank you very much madam farida for the introduction she has told us that uh, she's a student from Moon University and also she has briefly uh, told us what STIs are or sexual transmitted diseases. She has told us that infections which arise mainly due from having unprotected sex sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse, yes. Thank you very much, our guest. Then you have already given us that brief overview on these STIs. Now someone may ask which people are at risk of getting these sexual transmitted diseases? Okay. In our societies, yes. people are normally condemned and judged for having sexually transmitted infections. Okay. These sexually transmitted infections affect anyone that is sexually active regardless of the age. But to consider someone as an adult, we already say at the age of 18 and above but you find that in societies most of these people are starting sexual activities at the age of 15 so 
we take it that from the age of 15 to the age of 24, these people are sexually active and they engage themselves in sexual activities. So younger people at the age of 15 and 24 are always people at risk of acquiring the sexually transmitted infections. Maybe to cut you short, yes. uh, someone may ask why is it young people who are in that age range, you have said 15 to 25. Why are they the ones who are at a high risk now, of getting this uh, sexual transmitted disease? At this stage, this is where someone is at the puberty stage, yeah. and these people want to explore and find out what is really good about sex. Mm -hmm. I hear my friends talk about sex. You might find that this child is maybe 15, 18, but is engaged with people of 24 years old or 26. So they want to find out, they want to explore what is with sex. So you find that they're engaging into unprotected sexual activities. Oh, so just we can say they want to explore, they're excited. Yes, and their, their body is also demanding due to oh. that puberty stage, so they want to find out. And also, they are sexually active. In yes, they are sexually active. Okay, so, the other people who are at risk, these are people who are immunocompromised. So, you find that some people have other medical conditions, for example, diabetes. All these people have had HIV. HIV is one of these sexually transmitted infections. But if you already have a disease within you, it means your immunity is lowered. If the immunity is low, you're susceptible to always acquiring these infections. Okay. Yes. So that is the other group of people who are at risk. The other group of people who are at risk are people who misuse drugs. When I talk okay. about drugs, this is alcohol or other substances such as marijuana. Yes. And I have seen that people keep chewing those leaves. So if they are misused, you find that these people are susceptible because they will engage into sexual intercourse when they are not in their conscious mind. Oh, so they, yeah. this is how they want to go with anonymous partners. They don't know the status of this partner and end up acquiring this what this yeah. infection. Yeah. So it's all about in case they use these drugs, like they they will go unconscious and uh -huh. start doing things without a conscious mind. Yes. So they may end up getting indulging in two sexual activities which are not protected. Yes. Any howling and they end up getting this what these infections hope our dear viewers outside there you're not in it in case you're someone who uses these drugs like alcohol maybe uh, the marijuana so this one should be a key point for you that yes you, you may be using them but you know they have an impact they, whereby they can affect your conscious mind like you start doing things when you're not aware so you may end up having unprotected sex and you, this will lead you to getting or expose you to getting these sexually transmitted infections. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Farida. Okay, so now after these uh, people are at risk, then if we come to the predisposing factors, like which things pull, uh, like uh, uh, like can uh, bring these sexually transmitted infections to me? Which activities, which I do, which can. Uh, exposing me to getting these sexual transmitted diseases. The very first activity we are going to take it as engaging yourself in unprotected sexual intercourse. Oh, okay. That is the first point that exposes you to acquiring the sexually transmitted infections. If at all you do sex without that barrier, which is either a female or male condom, in case you do anal sex, oral sex or vaginal sex as long as it is not protected and there is involvement of the mucous membranes, the mouth, the vagina, you are at risk of acquiring the sexually transmitted infections. Okay. Then people who go for nose piercing, ear piercing and they also share maybe drugs using the intravenous root of sharing these drugs, you might find that they're using the same needles. The same needle that pierced someone who might be infected is the same needle being used on someone who is not infected. So this is how you're going to end up acquiring this sexually transmitted infection. So meaning it's not all about having the uh, in sexual intercourse, it, it can also be transmitted through blood? Yes. Okay. So these sexually transmitted infections Apart from getting them directly through sexual contact with your partner or your anonymous partner or the several partners you have, you can get it through body contact 
with bodily fluids such as semen, saliva, and blood itself, or blood products. Okay. So if you share sharp instruments, I remember even when we were still young, they used to tell us, do not ever share sharps with a person you don't know. Yeah. So if you end up sharing these sharps with that person, if this sharp instrument has been used on a person and it has come into contact with blood of the infected person, it means that can be passed on to you through blood as well. Okay. Yes. So for saliva, the more you kiss during that intimacy period with your partner, and this partner obviously is infected, for example, they have hepatitis B, you will end up getting infected as well. But through saliva, not okay. necessarily through sexual intercourse. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Farida. So, our dear viewers outside there, I hope you are noting uh, that all you, the factors which predispose you to getting this sexual transmitted diseases, unprotected sex, uh, sharing equipment like which piercings, which uh, infected persons, even a razor blade itself, uh, even a razor blade itself. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, madam. So now, when we come to in the societies outside there, some people have beliefs that in case I indulge in sex with a, a, a virgin, I want to get these sexual transmitted diseases. How true is that, madam? So that is not true, and I want to find out from you, do you really believe that it is true? And how sure are you that the partner you have mm. is not infected with such a condition? Of course, it may, it may be difficult for someone to know that this person is a virgin, and also it may be difficult for an individual to know that this person is having these infections. So, people saying that if you have sex with a virgin, you mm. cannot get these diseases, I want to tell people that some people are born with HIV. HIV is sexually transmitted. Mm -hmm. So you will find a girl looking hot, looking juicy for you, and mm -hmm. you say this girl, we cannot diagnose such sexually transmitted infections using our eyes. Mm -hmm. And you cannot find out from someone them, like themselves. They will tell you, even if you ask them their status, they can tell you no. But in actual sense, when they are infected. So sometimes even symptoms rarely manifest. Yes. It, they take long to show mm -hmm. up. And by the time they're showing up, it is in the end stage. So you can never find out from this person if they are sexually infected with those conditions so for you will go in with a person because they told you if you're with a virgin you cannot get infected you will get infected because hiv some people are born with it other people have syphilis but from their parents so you will find that you're getting these infections from this person just basing on the beliefs of the society yeah. And other people in the society, because now our parents keep telling us, abstain until marriage. So if a child goes at the age of 15 and they are sexually active, they have engaged themselves in sexual intercourse, which is not protected, you find that this child has started getting these symptoms. Maybe swellings, they are getting a rash, there is itching. This child will keep quiet because they are always judged in the society as immoral. So you find that this child is going to continue sleeping around with other men or other women, passing on this infection to other people because they kept quiet, symptoms are there, but because they fear to be judged and condemned, so they always quiet, keep quiet and just pass on the, what, the infection. But if you come to hospitals as nurses, we have that confidentiality. We diagnose and treat without even telling anyone. So do not always keep quiet because in the society you're going to be judged. Us nurses will not judge you and we shall offer the best treatment because some are curable, others are not. Okay. Thank you very much, madam. So she has told us that it is very clear that not all these sexual transmitted diseases actually like these beliefs that having uh, sexual intercourse is a virgin and that it is a, it's not true and she has discouraged us from doing such activities so our dear viewers you are noting it and clearing out of these false beliefs thank you very much madam then i come back to you mm -hmm. you have told us that people who are uh, you have told us things which predispose us to get these sexually transmitted mm -hmm. infections mm -hmm. yeah suppose in case someone has had unprotected sex with someone who is already infected how do how do does all these pathogens develop or these bacteria develop in the body no let me say maybe someone had hepatitis B and maybe you kissed or you had unprotected sex and this person is having HIV. So 
these microorganisms, because remember these sexually transmitted infections are spread or are caused by viruses, parasites, and bacteria. So once it is a virus, for example, HIV, which is the immunodeficiency virus, or the hepatitis B virus is being passed on from the infected person to you. Mm. So they will invade into your body. When they invade into the body, they will go into blood. And if they go into blood, they are going to start multiplying. Their multiplication, you will find that the body has its natural ability to fight these infections, mm. but the body cells will be weakened by the invaded microorganisms, either the parasite the bacteria or the virus and you will find that the longer it stays in the body the symptoms will now start developing because the immune cells have been destroyed by the microorganisms that have invaded into your body so this is how you start seeing all those symptoms yeah so it's all about these microorganisms they enter in your body and they multiply and they bring out these signs and symptoms yes okay so now maybe someone may ask i heard you say these sexual transmitted diseases uh, you, I had you talk of the virus, uh, HIV, I had you talk of the bacteria. Uh, do these sexual transmitted diseases have classes? Yes, we classify them according to what causes them. Okay. So we have those caused by the parasites, we have those caused by the virus, and we have those caused by bacteria. Okay. So some of the sexually transmitted infections that are caused by the parasites, we have trichomoniasis vaginalis. This is very common among the what? The women. Okay. So if a woman is infected by trichomoniasis vaginalis, she will pass on this infection to the man as long as sex is unprotected. Okay. Then also scabies is another one that is caused by a parasite where you will be having spots or rash on your skin. Then we have those that are caused by a virus and the very most common that you people know is the HIV which is the human immunodeficiency virus. So we have the human papilloma virus. The human papilloma virus is a normal microflora in our genital area for both men and the females. But when conditions favor this pathogen, it becomes pathogenic. But in actual sense, it is a normal microflora in our genital areas, which is the vagina, the vulva, and the penis. Okay. But in favorable conditions, or in case there is that infection you acquired from someone and they have passed it on to you, you find that even this normal microflora has multiplied and it has become pathogenic. So the human papilloma virus, once it becomes pathogenic, they are of different strains. We have 13 strains that cause cancer in women and that is cervical cancer mm -hmm. but in most cases it is always passed on to the woman to become severe and it becomes dangerous it is always carried by the men so if your partner is a man and is having multiple women you find that it is this man transferring this human papilloma virus to you that it has now become dangerous however much you have it with you at normal range but here it has become severe according to your body. Uh, how about you talk about these uh, having multiple partners? Also, you can eat, like, expose me to get... Uh, like, yes, as long as you have several sex partners. How, how the ones it? you know or the ones you don't know, as long as they are multiple, it predisposes you. Because you might find that one mm -hmm. does not have this sexual this sexually transmitted infection, okay. but the other one has. Remember, they are multiple. So you go with this one who is okay, and this one is not okay. You're bringing it back to oh, this person yes. who is what? Who is okay. okay. So back to the human papilloma virus. Like I said, it is normal for both men and women, but the more a partner keeps sleeping around with other people, they are bringing it back to what? To you. So this human papilloma virus, I said it has strains. We have strains that cause cancer, and we have others that cause what? Genital what? Yes. So you might find that the one that has caused the genital what is not the one causing the cancer. So this okay. human papilloma virus is responsible for the cervical cancer in ladies. Oh. And we always diagnose and treat if uh, it is earlier detected. Of recent, we have had a nationwide campaign where they have been vaccinating women against cervical cancer. I didn't know it's caused by, you have called it human papilloma? Human papilloma virus, virus. which okay. is a normal microflora, but yes. in case of changes in the 
vaginal pH, vaginal temperature, and that transmission from this partner to this partner, you find that it has become pathogenic and it is oh. no longer normal and it has to be treated. Once it is not treated, you end up getting cervical cancer as a woman. If you outside there may be asking you more yourself, what is pathogenic? Pathogenic, mm -hmm. this is when the microorganism which has been normal has now become dangerous in your body it's that it is now manifesting as signs and symptoms it has become dangerous that if it is not treated it can result into other complications okay so now maybe let's first zero to this uh, cervical cancer mm. how does cervical cancer present in, because it has been a worrying situation among women especially you talked of the ones in the reproductive age between 15 to 24 but mm. the recommended is 19 to 24 yes. so how does it present such that someone can easily run for screening or go to the hospital to be tested for this cervical cancer? So the very first complaint a woman can experience is painful sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. Remember, normal sex does not pain. But when you're having cervical cancer, you will find that you're having pain, pain during sexual intercourse. You can even get unusual vaginal bleeding between your periods you're not in your periods but you are getting vaginal bleeding all those are some of the warning signs that something is wrong down there and you really need to seek medical attention okay you can also get fatigue you can get other pain you can get pelvic pain all those are signs that can show you that something is wrong down there and you really need medical attention so when you come to us in the hospital we always do a vaginal examination where we put that speculum down there to view your cervix because this is cervical cancer so if we find that there may be abnormal discharges because we always run this test screening for cervical cancer using acetic acid mm -hmm. so we put that acid there for one minute after cleaning your cervix for the ladies now not the men okay. so <laughs> after cleaning <laughs> yes. after cleaning okay. we put that acetic acid there for one minute we mm. observe the changes if the changes are showing maybe there is bleeding cause an infected cervix the moment even you start cleaning you might find that it is already oozing either blood or some other what discharge so if we find that it is the early stage we always treat immediately there and then using the thermocoagulation machine. How does it, you have talked of this thermocoagulation machine, how does it work? So this one, it is always, this procedure is always performed by the physician. So me as a nurse, I might view and tell him my observations. Okay. So for him, he will come and operate the, what, the machine. He will okay. simply connect it to the socket it will be turned on and when it turns on it produces a red light so that red radiation is the one that we put inside there at the cervix and we burn that human papilloma virus before it becomes cancerous for it to get the cervical cancer so after burning of course you've got a wound maybe the cervix is even red we advise these women not to even play sex until they have healed very well so we even give them some tablets such as painkillers to take in that the pain can be relieved and we always give them antibiotics since it is a wound to avoid other infections strictly once we do that you are not allowed to have sex with your partner even if it is protected it is not allowed it, it might interfere with our Treatment. Why isn't it allowed to have sex yet uh, after the treatment? Because I believe the person will be well. Why, if you are maybe asking him or herself, why isn't it allowed? Remember now, there is a wound. Okay. And that human papilloma virus was already an infection. Yes. So if you disrupt that treatment, you might hinder the healing process. So it's like having a wound, like to, for example, on my hand, and I continue rubbing scratching it, it as it's time. healing, I scratch. You scratch, so it I keeps make... bleeding, bleeding, oh. bleeding. Yes. So that's why we tell them, do not have sex until you are okay. Our and we always scream every after three hours. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we also you talked of the antibiotics. Uh, uh, which antibiotics do you give? You said it's all about like since it has become a wound, mm. uh, someone may get uh, uh, other bacterial infections. Yes. Uh, now a viewer may be asking him or herself, which antibiotics do you give? 
So we can use the IV therapy where we just use the vein to give these antibiotics and we can give ceftriaxone, okay. which is always one gram for the adults according to your weight. So then we can as well give oral antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin and maybe metronidazole. These are very strong antibiotics that always kill the bacteria. They kill this bacteria and do not leave it there at all. All right. Thank you very much, madam. So on the pain, how do you manage the pain? So the pain, we always give painkillers. And since this might not be severe pain, we can give no more painkillers. Because for morphine, it is a very strong painkiller. So okay. we don't normally use morphine in these patients. We can give them ibuprofen. We can give them diclofenac just to relieve the pain. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, our dear viewers, I come back to you. I uh, hope your morning is still good. Uh, we have had our guest here, Madam Farida Farouk Sela. Uh, today, our topic of discussion is on sexually transmitted diseases, where we had uh, she told us that it's the it's derived from its exact name, sexually transmitted, meaning you get these diseases or infections through having unprotected sex. sex. Yeah. Then also she told us of the signs. And simple, uh, sorry, she told us of the classes. She told us we have the viral, we have the bacterial, and we have the parasite. The, the parasite, the ones who grew from parasite cause. And then she told us the ones under the uh, viral, she has already been telling us about the human papilloma virus, which she said causes him cervical cancer. And also she talked of the HIV, and also she talked of. Uh, the trichomonas vaginalis, which was under the uh, parasite, uh, resulting from parasite cause. Uh, then uh, let's first go for a short commercial break. Uh, in our next segment, what you should not miss uh, is the types or the examples of infections arising from uh, bacterial cause. This is your one stop shop uh, of health information and data or details which help you and your family to live a healthy and well life. Thank you very much, dear viewers. Let's get back. TV, lighting up the region. Inside technology, new TV innovation with an inbuilt decoder that connects you to both StarTimes antenna and satellite signal. With StarTimes Inside Global Star TV, you can enjoy over 300 local and international channels. One month StarTimes highest bouquet for free. Automatic system update, more benefits, more affordable. StarTimes Inside Global Star TV is available in all StarTimes branches and dealers countrywide. Star Times Inside. Entertainment in Built. We are the passion you've been waiting for! It's Yunus Junior Santa It's our league! Our football, our boys, our style. Star Times UPL new season starts 15 September. Go for it! What the finish! 
The Ugandan flair, Brazilian samba, Portuguese magic, the night football craze. More TV games live on Senuka Prime and FUFA TV only on Star Times. At the Star Times UPL, our league, go for it. Nile TV, lighting up the region. Dear viewers, it's still your doctor show on West Nile TV. Uh, you can get us on Star Times 477 and on Zook State Light 0073. I uh, hope your morning is good. And our topic of discussion today was uh, sexual transmitted uh, infections or diseases, which was arising from the previous session or topic we had, which was about reproductive health, uh, where our previous guest talked about uh, uh, the she broke them down that reproductive health also can be classified uh, like into other services like sexual transmitted D, infection screening and also the contraceptives. So then we talked of the contraceptives. But today it's all about uh, sexual transmitted diseases and my guest here I introduced what sexual transmitted infections are, uh, that there are these infections arising from uh, having unprotected sex and also she broke them down that they are viral, uh, uh, sexual transmitted diseases, uh, parasitic, and also the bacterial. bacterial. Yes, where she broke down the viral, we had already talked of uh, the parasitic, we talked of the trichomonas vaginalis, and also the, para, the viral, she has told us of the human papilloma virus, uh, where she told us this is causes cervical cancer, and this is a worrying cancer, especially women who are in reproductive age. So in case you are there and you are in between the age group of 19 to 25, actually up to 30, it's advisable for you to go to the nearest health center close to you. You go the screen uh, for you of this cervical cancer and also other uh, diseases like the HIV. Then also maybe my guest, uh, welcome also back from that short commercial break. Thank you. Yeah, so maybe what we didn't talk about under the viral, we didn't talk about HIV. You can just give, give a brief overview of it because our viewers who have been with us also we have ever discussed about HIV. Okay, thank you. So we all know about HIV and numbers have continued to increase for people who are infected with HIV. Yes. By the way, people seem to no longer fear this HIV and fear maybe other diseases more than HIV. But HIV is a deadly disease that if you're not treated very well or you don't take your medication very well, it will again develop into the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is AIDS. And AIDS is a life-threatening condition that is as a result of this HIV. For HIV, we know the various symptoms as fatigue, you might get that cough that is persistent, which can even predispose you to getting TB which is tuberculosis. Then this HIV is the same that will manifest as you're getting muscle pains. You're always tired even after doing nothing. You're tired. You get rashes all over the body. And, you, and once you get rashes, you're going to lose self-esteem because you can no longer walk in public because of these what? These rashes. So it's always good to always go for checkups every after three months. Even if you're sure your partner is not infected and you're sure of their status, always go and test for HIV every after three months. It's when we test for this HIV. We even have these self-testing kits, the data mine, and we also have the oral quick test. And this test is the easiest to use, was a healthcare provider teaches you on how to use it, and it is 99% effective. Uh, actually, the guest whom we had last time, that was Sister 
uh, Violet, she told us that uh, she told our viewers who are active then on how we use this uh, or a quick maybe yes. you can easily uh, just remind our viewer outside there uh, who is watching this show such that they can get that information just briefly how does it do we use this or a quick thank you so for the HIV or a quick test which is the one on market now because it is easy and simpler to use so for that or a quick test it's just a matter of your saliva so you get the swab which comes in the test you pass you rub your gum very well and you get that sample of saliva then there is that liquid which acts as a buffer that is there so you dip this swab in that liquid until you see that there is some movement okay, okay. so you then place it on that board there is always a board and you leave it for something like 10 to 15 minutes then you will see your results so if it comes only one line in the control that is a negative and if they come to lines in the patient and control that is a positive okay those indications are there that control and t okay yes I'll so if you have double lines positive you have got those who had forgotten uh, our guest here has reminded us on how to use that or a quick uh, testing kit all right yes. okay so now madam uh, maybe before I take you to the bacterial, uh, like disease, uh, sexual transmitted diseases. Yes. Still on the human papilloma virus. In case someone does not treat that human papilloma virus, which you said leads to cervical cancer, mm -hmm. what are those complications someone can get? Are there danger, danger signs and symptoms someone can get in case they are reluctant on treating this cervical cancer? Yes, the very first being cervical cancer. And okay. if cervical cancer has come to its end stage, it means there is an overgrowth. Yeah. An overgrowth which might result into a tumor down there. So you always come for the tests. So if we check and see that there is something that is outgrowing towards the vagina from the cervix, meaning this damage might have gone up to the what? The uterus. So we always run other tests to okay. see can we make a surgery and remove this or it is worse that it has affected it has affected the uterus itself so if we find that this has even gone up to the uterus it means we are going to do hysterectomy we are going to do hysterectomy if you answer there may be asking what is hysterectomy so hysterectomy this is a surgical procedure that is done by the surgeon we remove the entire uterus so if we remove that uterus, it means you will not menstruate again, you will not bear children again. That's why it is very vital to always come for these checkups. As long as you've seen some abnormal discharge that is really huge in quantity, it is, it is frequent, it is having bad odor, like fishy, it is having a bad color, which is either green or yellowish, always run for these tests, because if not treated, these are some of the complications that come about and we end up removing the whole uterus. Okay, so maybe to ask, is the uterus the same as the womb? Yes, the uterus oh. is the same as your womb. Certainly. So for ladies, if we remove the womb, now imagine removing your womb at a tender age of 24 years or 25, you don't have children or you have only one, it is really not good. Okay. Our dear viewers, you are not in, in case you have these signs and symptoms of this cervical cancer which she told us, better rush and go for screening such that you start treatment or they start managing you because otherwise they will remove your uterus or your womb and you will be unable to conceive or have more children again. again. Otherwise you will be infertile, I would say. Yes, infertile. Okay. You can't bear children. Okay, you can't bear children. And you know men these days, yeah. what is married without children, what is married without kids, they need to be called father they and you can't parents. offer kids. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you won't last in this marriage. Okay. Then about the viral sexually transmitted infections, okay. we have some like the genital warts or genital herbs. So, some, by the way, for the genital herbs, you might find that they're not even painful. They're not painful. So they can be there. So as women or men, we always shave our pubic hairs. So you shave and sometimes you can get boils, which can go away eventually. But for these genital warts or the herbs, you find that 
they are going to continue piling up there, but they are not painful, but with time they start becoming itchy. So for the genital herbs, you find that it is a fluid filled blister, which later the fluid gets away and it becomes a sore that can be painful and that is you've got the infection but it is coming around six weeks after getting the infection this is when the blisters start forming and you get sores then for the genital warts these ones start developing as you hear what's something that is hard they, they they form in a way that it is like a cauliflower let me hope our viewers know what a cauliflower is mm. so it can form around the anus or it forms around the vagina or even the what the penis mm. so this is where you find that they have not been painful but again they're going to become very itchy and very uncomfortable okay yes all right thank you very much madam for it so You're now welcome. we have done uh, the parasitic sexual transmitted diseases and the viral. viral so now you can now take us to the bacteria which examples do we have under this bacterial sexual transmitted diseases so under the bacterial sexually transmitted infections or diseases we have syphilis syphilis is the most common following okay. HIV. Mm -hmm. This syphilis is a deadly disease. So you always get sores on the skin. You get sores or lesions that are painful and they can even be discharging. Discharging pus like like pus moving out of those what those sores. They are they can affect any part of the body. So this syphilis is deadly in that if a pregnant woman is not treated, it can affect the what? The unborn baby. That's why we always advise mothers to go for antenatal care in that they are screened of HIV, hepatitis, and syphilis. Because if syphilis is not treated during childbirth, that contact of the baby and the mother's blood, this syphilis can be passed on to the what? To the child. And in mothers that are still pregnant and syphilis has not been screened and they don't know, this is where you find that a mother is getting a miscarriage. If God is good and you don't get the miscarriage, you find that you will have a premature baby. A premature baby, this is the pregnancy that has not made 36 weeks because a normal pregnancy goes up to 36 to 40 weeks. So like the baby is like has not made it the nine months. Yes, this baby is not full term okay. the baby will come out at 26 weeks what happens if the baby comes out at 26 weeks this is when they take your baby for incubation and if they take the baby there this is going to damage the baby even psychologically these are children you're going to find when they are not sharp but it was because of the untreated syphilis that has affected the child that you've got a premature baby who is going to go under th who is going to go through all this which will affect the baby's lifestyle so we also have gonorrhea for gonorrhea it is also a deadly sexually transmitted infection it always presents with burning by the way burning cessation on urination is a common symptom in sexually transmitted infections the abnormal vaginal discharge abnormal vaginal bleeding all those are signs and symptoms of sexually transmitted infections so for gonorrhea once it is not treated and a mother happens maybe to give birth to a child the child can even become blind because the child has been infected during that childbirth. So this bacteria has infected the baby's eyes. This baby is going to become it's, blind It's with why time. to have a child who is blind due to failure to manage just a sexually transmitted infection. Which is even curable. Because we curable. always give antibiotics such as Bethacin G, which is a penicillin, and it is the best to cure this gonorrhea okay it is stubborn but we also use strong penicillins to be stubborn on it and it is cured okay so once you're diagnosed with such a um, sexually transmitted infection it is curable okay yes so you have broken it down for us in the bacterial infections yeah. uh, which are sexually transmitted you talked of the uh, the syphilis and you have talked of the gonorrhea yes. uh, are there other uh, bacterial bacterial like sexual transmitted yes. infections we have another one which is chlamydia it okay. is also common among mm -hmm. both the males and the females it also presents the same as others yes. so you might get the same symptoms but when it is a different sexually transmitted infection that's why i urge that any symptom you get even if it is a slight itching or you get a burning when you're urinating kindly rush to the hospital in that they can find out 
which sexually transmitted infection is this. By the way, some of these sexually transmitted infections present as the urinary tract infections. Because even in urinary tract infections, you find that we have that burning sensation on urination. All these infections are treatable. But for the sexually transmitted infections, and the others, the UTIs, we always carry out these tests and confirm is it truly a urinary tract infection or it is a sexually transmitted infection. And we give the appropriate treatment that will help our, our patient. So people always consider candida to be sexually transmitted. Actually, that's what I wanted to ask you because also people, it's common that they have candida. Is yes. It also candida is sexually transmitted disease? Yes. Candida is not grouped as a urinary tract infection and it is not a sexually transmitted infection as well. Okay. Candida itself is a normal flora in our vagina as ladies. It is not in men. It is not there. Those kind of species are not there in men. So if a man is getting such an infection, this man is getting it maybe from a woman. So yes, the man can get it through sexual intercourse, but it is not grouped as a sexually transmitted infection. For it, it is a yeast or fungal infection. This fungal infection or yeast infection comes as a result of change in the vaginal pH or the vaginal temperature that mm. this yeast will now overgrow. Mm. And if it overgrows, it's when you will start getting cuddled like discharge, which can be yellow, which can be smelly, and that is the candida. But it is not necessarily that it is grouped as a urinary tract infection or a sexually transmitted disease. But as you know, if you have unprotected sex, you can get it. But for it, it is a yeast or fungal infection. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Farida. Uh, our dear viewers, hope you are noting all the things done. She talked of the bacterial sexual transmitted diseases, where she talked of syphilis as number one, and she told us in case you don't manage syphilis, uh, it can lead you, in case you are pregnant, you can get a miscarriage or an abortion, uh, which may not be good to you, the mother, and your child, because you lose your, your baby, and also, it can also, I think, put this woman at a risk of losing his or her life. Yes. Yes. And also, she talked of the, you talked of the gonorrhea, yes. uh, where you said the gonorrhea also is a, a deadly bacterial sexual transmitted disease, uh, which actually can, if not treated, uh, in, and you're pregnant, you can produce a child who is blind. Yes. That is worrying. Then also you talked of this uh, candida. Uh, yes. You said also it is a sexual transmitted disease, but uh, no, not uh, Not grouped as a sexual yeah. transmitted disease, and yes. it is not a urinary tract infection. Yes. However, it can be passed on from one partner who is infected to, to the uh, other. For it, it is just a yeast mm. infection of fungal infection because it is caused by the candida species that are fungus. And also you said it is uh, like we have those microorganisms in the vagina which we, you call the normal flora yes. and you said in case so if you are there maybe uh, aging who has the desire to know these signs and symptoms such that in the case they get to them they can rush to the nearby health facility to get treatment. So what are these signs and symptoms uh, people with sexual transmitted diseases or is it present to us? Okay, so generally the most warning sign for such sexually transmitted infections is the unusual discharge, mm -hmm. both for the men and the women. You, a, a man will see a penal discharge which is not watery. A normal discharge is always watery and sticky. For the men, even the ejaculate itself, it is always clear. Yeah. For women, once we are in ovulation or there is an immunobalance, the discharge you get is clear and sticky. Yeah. But if you're seeing a gray discharge, this is a warning sign probably we start suspecting that maybe it is a bacterial vaginosis. Okay. Then if you start seeing a yellow or greenish, both the men and the women from the penis and the what and the vagina, these are sexually transmitted infections. And this discharge, trust me, is going to be smelling. Mm -hmm. You cannot withstand the smell even yourself. So this is a warning sign that you should even quickly come to the hospital so that you get the what? The best 
treatment. So the the other signs and symptoms, you're going to have painful sexual intercourse. Maybe Remember? before we go to those other signs and symptoms, yes. I had a, a lady, she was my colleague, she came to me once complaining that she's having a discharge which is fishy, like smelling like fish. Yes. Now, you might start getting this discharge when it is maybe curdled like, like milk, okay. but when it is not smelly yet. But as time goes on and it is advancing, it is getting worse, you start getting that fishy smell or a rotten meat-like smell. So it means she had a sexual transmitted infection. Now, let me take you back small. Okay. So for candida, candida you can get that discharge which is curdled like or creamy but it is not smelly. Remember it is a yeast infection. It is not smelly. Yes. But now in sexually transmitted infections, that smell is always there. Okay. A very, very strong smell. Fishy or rotten meat like. Oh, okay. Yes. So we are still on pain? Yes. So you have pain during sex. Now during sexual intercourse, nobody experiences pain because it is fun. All people are aroused and they are enjoying the activity. But if you're in the activity and you're really getting pain, there is a what? A problem. So for the ladies, you find that they have that unusual vaginal bleeding. You are not pregnant. Let me say, it might be implantation bleeding. For implantation bleeding, it is just a light spotting where you get pink discharge, a pinkish discharge, which goes on after implant, which goes away after implantation. But here, you're having bleeding, real bleeding in between your periods. You're not menstruating, but you're getting this unusual bleeding. It might not be too much, but as long as this bleeding is what is there, that is also another warning sign for the ladies. Okay. Then for both men and ladies, you can have pelvic pain yes. pelvic pain like the, that hip region you're really having some pain lower abdominal pain when there is lower abdominal pain it is also another warning sign that an infection is taking place then sometimes since it is an infection and there is inflammation due to the disease process you might find that someone is getting a fever your body temperature is deviating from the normal which is 37 Yes. Yes. And it is going further. It is 36.5 to 37. Yeah. So if you're having a high body temperature, this fever can be as a result of other infections that might not be sexually transmitted infections. But if you're having the symptoms I talked about earlier, then fever comes in. Probably this is a sexually transmitted what? Infection. Then we also have rashes. For people, most especially that are having scabies, people with HIV, you might find that you have what? You have a rash all over your body. So sometimes for the scabies, if it is a baby, you find that these rashes are on the head, the face, and the soles of their feet for the babies. But for the grown-ups, you will find that the elbow, the ankle, the waist, all these places, the neck can be what? Can be having that rash for scabies. Then for HIV, still you're having the rash which can be all over the what? The body. Okay. Yes. So for, for syphilis, we said you're having lesions all over the body. And for, yes, yes. probably, generally, those mm. are some of the what? The symptoms. They can cross cut to other sexually transmitted infections, but they can be severe or more in specifically that sexually transmitted infection. So a viewer there who is a female may mm. be also asking, can these STIs affect her menstrual cycle or periods? Yes, it is true. Now, if someone is having a sexually transmitted infection, you might find that their cycle is either going to they might even start skipping their menstruation periods mm. because the more this discharge compiles and compiles and compiles within your fallopian tubes as a lady you find that menstruation the, the, the egg yes will be released but it cannot bypass the what the, the these discharges in the fallopian tube because oh, they are okay. compacted so yes even you find that you cannot conceive because the sperm cannot reach the what? The egg because of that discharge that is compacted in the what? In the fallopian tube. So the endometrium may also fail to, 
to, to, to, to shrink and shed for you to get your menstruation periods because there is something already that is blocking something there. So these hormones might even rise thinking maybe you're pregnant. Okay, now if you are, So you end I up skipping you. the menstruation okay. periods. Sorry to cut you short. I heard you say talk of the endometrium. If you may be asking what is an endometrium. Okay, the endometrium is a lining of your womb. What yeah. you know as the womb, okay, the uterus. As the surface of the womb yes. of the uterus. So okay. it always sheds every month as long as you are not pregnant. But because of these infections that are there, things are compacted in the fallopian tubes, nothing can take place. Okay? Yes. So you find that you're either skipping your menstruation periods because hormones are very high, maybe there is pregnancy, which is suspected, but in actual sense, the pregnancy is not there. Okay. But something else is taking place. Now, you might find that now like in cancers, the cervical cancer has reached the uterus. Yes. Still you will skip your menstruation. Why? Because something is already growing there, which is not a baby. But as long as something is growing in the uterus, the signals will be, eh, this one is pregnant. Yes. So you find that you're not pregnant, but you're not getting your menstruation period. You're skipping them. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Farida. Uh, she has, well, in this segment, she has told us of the bacterial uh, sexual transmitted infections. So she talked of the gonorrhea, the candida, and the syphilis. And also in this session, uh, she talked of the signs and symptoms. Many where she talked of the lower abdominal pain, uh, also pain during sexual intercourse. Uh, she also talked in case uh, you are in, to be make you miss. Uh, in case you are a woman, it may make you miss your uh, period days or your monthly period days. And also, uh, she talked of some back pain, and that was it, uh, which I can get. I got from her yes. presentation. Uh, just to add on that, okay. there is also soreness or swelling in oh. the vagina or the penis itself. Oh. So okay. you find that the man is having swollen testicles, swollen penis, which is really very painful, and a woman might be having sores in the vagina or swellings in the vulva. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Also, you have not it, our dear viewers, you may get swellings, uh, these sores in your uh, private parts. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, let's first get to into a short commercial break, and we shall be back in the next segment. And here is what you should not miss, the prevention, uh, the management. How do they manage these people having these sexual transmitted infections, and also some of the complications which these people get. Let's first get into a short commercial break. Meet back shortly. Thank you very much, our dear viewers. Lighting up the region. Inside technology, new TV innovation with an inbuilt decoder that connects you to both StarTimes antenna and satellite signal. With StarTimes Inside Global Star TV, you can enjoy over 300 local and international channels. One month StarTimes highest bouquet for free. Automatic system update. More benefits, more affordable. StarTimes Inside Global Star TV is available in all StarTimes branches and dealers countrywide. Star Times Inside. Entertainment in Built. We are the passion you've been waiting for! It's Yunus Junior Santa It's our league! A 
our football, our boys, our style. Star Times UPL new season starts 15 September. Go for it. What the finish for Master Fukube. The Ugandan flair, Brazilian samba, Portuguese magic, the night football craze. More TV games live on Senuka Prime and FUFA TV only on Star Times. The Star Times UPL, our league, go for it. Nile TV, lighting up the region. Welcome back, our dear viewers, from that short commercial break, and it's still me, your host, Sandy Junior Tom, a student from Muni University doing my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, and of last week we had a session or a topic of discussion, which was on reproductive health, where we broke it down into contraception use, and also today our main topic of discussion was on sexually transmitted infections or diseases, which is also a reproductive health concern. And in the previous segment, our guest, Madame Farida, uh, talked of the bacterial uh, infections or sexual transmitted infections, where she talked of the gonorrhea, uh, the syphilis, uh, the, also the, the, the chlamydia, and she gave us also the signs and symptoms of those specific uh, diseases where she said in syphilis, if you don't manage it, it can lead even to miscarriage in case you're pregnant. And also when we, she, when she on gonorrhea, she told us also in case you're pregnant and you don't manage it, it can predispose you or expose you and your child to, like your child to become blind. You give birth to a child who is blind who cannot see. Then she also told us of the signs and symptoms in that previous segment where she talked of the abdomen, abdominal pain, uh, the back pain, uh, missing of periods, and also she talked of the discharges whereby you can have uh, smelling discharges which are irritating or smelling where she talked of the fish smell and she said that one is always mainly candida. Thank you very much our dear viewers. I come back to Madame Farida. Yes. So in case someone is having these infections, uh, how do you advise this person? Uh, okay, like someone has got these signs and symptoms, what do you advise this person who is home there to do? So normally, like I said, once you see such a symptom, you're having that abdominal discharge, you're having abdominal vaginal bleeding, you're having swellings in your private parts or genitalia, always come to the hospital for different tests that can be run in that we find out what really the problem is and we get the appropriate medication. So in our management for these signs and symptoms, okay. once you come to the hospital, we always confirm we do maybe a urine sample test or we can do a swab test. A swab test is for the discharge. So we can do a high vaginal swab or we can do the penile discharge swab to find out specifically which sexually transmitted infection our patient is having. Yeah. So we can do the urinalysis as well. Now here, after finding out if it is syphilis, if it is gonorrhea, we shall set our patient on antibiotics and these antibiotics we normally give safe triaxone we can give doxycycline whereby our patient can be taking two tablets three times a day we always give metronidazole metronidazole is very good it is a broad spectrum antibiotic okay. which is always taken orally and it kills these bacterial infections it kills all the bacteria so we can also give ciprofloxacin it is also another good antibiotic okay. so for the viral infections we normally give anti antivirals mm -hmm. though um, for hiv we can give lamivudine it is always a, a combination of these antiviral drugs yes. to make one which can really help our what our patient so these antivirals will help by killing these what microorganisms such as the hiv virus 
it will prevent them from repli re re replicating it. Eh? Replicating is multiplying over and over again with time. So here, if we get this, we give our patient this drug, it will limit on the growth of these what of these microorganisms, in that the patient does not go to the advanced stage of HIV, which is AIDS. Yeah. Then for hepatitis B, we give the same treatment as we give for HIV because it is also a virus. So these two are not curable, but we can give these antivirals to limit on the growth of this what? Like this reduce viruses. the further growth of these yes. viruses. Yeah. Okay. So also maybe uh, in the previous segments, I had you talk of penicillin G. Uh, also, is it used to treat and manage these uh, sexually transmitted diseases? Yes, it is a very strong penicillin. It is benzacin penicillin G. It is a very strong penicillin that treats gonorrhea. So we always give it to people we find that they are having what gonorrhea. So for these genital warts, genital herbs, the scabies, we can use ointments and creams, medicated ointments and creams such as antifungals like cotrimazo. We always make sure that you clean the area that is infected and you start applying gently for a specified period of time, probably seven days to ten days until the infection disappears. Okay, you talked briefly on the question which I actually wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. So like how long, in case like you have come to the hospital, you have confirmed that this person has a sexual transmitted infection or disease and you have started this person, if it was like for example from bacterial cause, like the person has syphilis mm -hmm. or has gonorrhea. Like, for how long do you put this person on treatment? Like, so, mm. our treatment using antibiotics normally run for 7 days to okay. 10 days. And we see the outcome. Yes. Is this antibiotic we've given working for the patient or not? So if it is not, we discontinue and we can give another one. But normally, for sexually transmitted infections, we normally combine. We can combine these antibiotics in that we get the best results. So for example, a person who is having, for example, a person who is having advanced, okay, maybe syphilis, we can give doxycycline, we add with Cipro, we add with Metro, in that we get a very best treatment for this patient. Okay, that is very good. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, our viewers, you are noting, in case you get these uh, sexual transmitted diseases, they can take time to heal. Uh, like she has told us, you will take over seven to ten days on treatment or taking these drugs. And I know some of you outside there, you hate taking tablets. So it is better to prevent get uh, prevent yourself from getting these sexual transmitted diseases uh, to avoid this medication burdens or worrying yourself on taking these drugs. So. Uh, we have talked of these uh, medications we give to people. Mm -hmm. So how can an individual or outside there protect him or herself or prevent uh, him and the family from getting these sexually transmitted infections? Okay, thank you. So before we go to that, eh, yes. it is always not good to do self-medication. That's why I would advise everyone who gets these signs and symptoms to always come to the hospital for testing. So you might find that these, for example, the pregnant mothers, there are some medications they are not supposed to take. Okay. Once you get them and take them, you're going to terminate your what? Your pregnancy. Okay. Like an, a miscarriage. Yes. Okay. So you might lose your baby just because of self-medication. That's why I, I devise that Everyone who gets a sign and symptom of such a character walk to the hospital and they get the proper medication for you. So how could someone prevent such sexually transmitted infection? Yes. The very first and most reliable intervention is abstaining from sex. You can do without sex. For example, these people of young age, 15 mm. to 24, you okay. can do without sex. Yes. So you can abstain. Okay. Then. If you cannot abstain yeah. because we know the body nature demand what as people yeah. keep claiming, Someone may be yes. the highest, the yes. demand so you can always have sex which is protected okay. either with a female condom or male condom. And I would advise people to always leave the oral sex, okay? Because oral sex is also what deadly, 
Okay. How will you protect the oral sex? Okay. Because actually, I had that friend of whom I told you, like, she had that pain in, the, in her private parts. Mm -hmm. She also told me she had, like, oral, oral, oral thrush. Thrush. Yes. from the mouth. Yes. yes. Also because the rest, is it was a sign and symptom of this sexual Yes, condition? you can even get mouth ulcers okay. because this parasite or bacteria or virus is being transported from the vagina or the penis to the mouth. Okay. Which mouth we use for eating, eating. food. Yes. So it is always not good. So if you can do with maybe the vaginal sex, it is okay. Then anal sex and oral sex, let's leave that. And for the vaginal sex, it should be protected yes. sex. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, maybe here in Uganda, it's uh, not allowed to also have the what homosexuals yes. it's prohibited yeah okay so which then, other interventions or activities can one do to protect himself from getting so the disease? other activities is always coming for checkups testing and early diagnosis in that if we detect you have the sexually transmitted infection it does not go to the advanced stage we do the best interventions immediately at the early stage in that we can treat our patients okay so then also you can as well reduce on the number of partners multiple know. partners are a source of this sexually transmitted infection always be faithful and have one sexual partner i would like you to give more light on that because here yeah, in africa we call it like an african man doesn't have one woman please emphasize that point for our african men who are outside there who have more than one wife so living alone being an african man yes. even according to religions be it christians or muslims it is already said that you should have one apart from the muslim who go for four and it is not a must unless you can afford so it is always good to have one sexual partner why because even spiritually it is not allowed to have more than one sexual partner okay yes all right apart from our muslim brothers and sisters and still you have to know the status of your partner so okay. if you detect you are detected in early detection that you have maybe this infection as you're treating yourself bring your partner along do not get the treatment alone because you might treat yourself but when your partner was also already infected okay. so this partner is bringing it back to you yeah so you may treat yourself and heal yes. but you, when your partner is not on treatment now you after carries you, then back carries back the, the infection, infection and to visit. you oh, okay. yes and the other thing is when you're on treatment always adhere to the treatment Finish that treatment until you're well before you resume to sex. Okay. So you can do away with sex for a while until you're better and well off. All right. Yes. So, sis, thank you very much, Madam Farida. She has talked of the preventive measurements uh, where she has told us mainly the main point of it all is abstinence like you stay away from sex and also she has told us in case the body demands are high like if you can't do without having sex uh, she told us to have protected sex where she encouraged us, encouraged us uh, to use uh, female condoms and male condoms so our dear viewers you know how to effectively use these uh, preventive measurements like the condoms like our previous uh, guest we had last time madame monica uh, told us not to like a condom is one use time on not to after like a first round you want to go for a second round like you want to get another uh, you have to get another condom not reusing the same uh, piece of condom then also she talked of in case you know here we have african men they say an african man doesn't have one wife and she told us to always uh uh, do what? Uh, limit the number of sexual partners we have and encourage us to have only uh, one sexual partner such that in case you have the infection like another woman can't transmit it to you so you can transmit it uh, to other women. Then also she told us in case you in treatment uh, it's better to do treatment in case you're a couple you have your wife or husband all of you to go on treatment in order to protect yourself from getting this uh, disease because you may treat yourself and heal when your wife or husband has not healed then this will predispose you again in case you have a sexual intercourse then this will predispose you again to get back this same uh, infection Okay. Yes, another key point is yes. circumcision, circumcision for the men. 
Then, you, um, research shows mm -hmm. that 60% of circumcised men are at a lower risk of getting these sexually transmitted infections, most especially the HIVs. Why? So, so a viewer may be asking, how can circumcision protect someone from getting this uh, sexually transmitted diseases? Now, when you're not circumcised, remember there is that foreskin. Okay. Many who are not circumcised can witness, you can check it. That foreskin always harbors these microorganisms. You cannot like clean it very well, yes, and keeps them. Mm -hmm. So if you're circumcised, this foreskin is cut off and the penis that, that, that inner part of the penis mm. can harden and get used. Okay. So it becomes strong, but the one that is in the other sheath, that forward skin, okay. it is always inside there and soft. So during your erection, any slight cut or any slight contact, yes. if your woman is infected, that vaginal fluid plus your, your uncircumcised penis, if they get into contact, it is easy for you to get this what? Sexually transmitted infections. Because they will harbor them and keep them here, which predisposes you to what? To get. So it is always good for men to be circumcised. It is not only for the Muslims, but every man for health benefits, they should be circumcised. At least it contributes 60% in lowering the risk for acquiring such infections. Okay, thank you very much, madam. Hope our men outside there, you are noting on the benefit of circumcision, on how it is 60% effective to protect you from getting these sexually transmitted diseases. And last time, uh, our host, uh, sorry, our guest, um, Sister Nema, who is a worker at Yarua Regional Fire Hospital, told us they offer free safe circumcision to men. So in case you're outside there, uh, you're not yet circumcised, it's better you rush, you go to the hospital, at a rural regional fire hospital, they circumcise you. Now especially we have these uh, students or children coming back from school, the vacists, those who have finished senior four, and also those who are still finishing their, their P7 exams, uh, please rush to your nearby hospital and get circumcised to protect you for future uh, refer like use or protection okay yes. thank you very much madam farida you're, you're welcome uh, is there any other advice you can give to someone to prevent or keep himself safe from getting these sexual transmitted diseases i would advise our viewers to always have proper genital hygiene keep the pubic hairs off always shave make sure that your genital area is dry do not leave it wet then I would advise them to always, if they are detected with such a sexually transmitted infection, any of what we talked about, always adhere to the treatment in that you prevent complications. So we have some complications that might result from these sexually transmitted infections if they are left untreated. For example, HIV will result into AIDS. AIDS yes. Then for syphilis, we say it results into miscarriages, Miscarriage, yeah. premature birth, Hmm? So the baby can even get congenital like, syphilis. Like producing a child who is not yet nine months old. Yes, and those babies always disturb. Okay. So if this syphilis has come to advanced stages, this is where you find that this this bacteria are traveling to the brain, and if it goes there, this is when someone is having mental breakdown it okay. damages the what the brain so we have other complications such as ectopic pregnancy in women you find that yes you can conceive and get pregnant Maybe what but is an ectopic pregnancy for our view outside is it? okay so for the ectopic pregnancy this is the pregnancy that is growing out of your womb that is the best way you can understand it so okay. yes you're getting pregnant but the implantation or the growing fetus is not in the womb and in normal pregnancy the fetus has to grow or the, the baby womb. has to grow in the what in, in the, the womb, womb. Yeah. so this pregnancy you cannot even survive because if you're not worked on you can even lose yourself your, your, your life it is always accompanied with severe pain wherever the baby is growing from so if you come to the hospital of course we terminate it okay then we have some other complications such as chronic pelvic pain your pelvic region, this is the hip region, you find that you have a chronic pain you, that you cannot withhold or withstand. Then we can have other complications for, a, for men, such as, and women also, infertility, mm -hmm. because those organs are what? Already damaged, that would help in what? In conceiving or in ejaculation. So for a man, you might find that they, they are even going to have 
erectile dysfunction, they cannot hold the erection for more than two minutes even. Mm -hmm. You erect it falls, you erect it falls. Mm -hmm. So all those are complications that can come with sexually transmitted infections. So I urge that all our viewers, as long as you get those symptoms, walk to the hospital, they do the appropriate tests and give the appropriate treatment. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Parinda, for that elaborate explanation and advice and the complications. Maybe to ask, uh, is it possible, like suppose someone doesn't treat or manage these uh, sexual transmitted infections now on the side of me. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for this? I uh, hear some people say that like that uh, private part of your penis or penile organ can fall off. Yes. Now, in such circumstances where I talked about having blisters, that was the genital herbs. Mm -hmm. So you find that the more the blisters are forming around the penis, they can continue to form and form and form. So the more they form, it, it appears to be like a cutting, a cutting. But I doubt if any male can stay at home when they are seeing such a thing taking place because it always is, is always accompanied with severe pain. So it can cut and cut and cut until it falls off in case you do not get the what? The treatment. Okay. But it is from the blisters that okay. form and Keep cutting themselves okay, off. Around. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, our viewers are noting in case you get these sexual transmitted infections, if you're a man and you don't manage it, uh, first of all, she told us you may not be able to maintain your erection for more than two minutes. And also, in the severe cases, your uh, private part may fall off. And that is worrying, of course. So you have to manage yourself in case you get these uh, signs and symptoms. It's better, as she told us, as you get these signs and symptoms, rush very early to the hospital. They screen you and they start treatment. Then also on the side of women, she told us you can become infertile. You can also uh, like get a miscarriage. Uh, also, you can get a child or a baby, a well-producing, a baby who is blind. Mm -hmm. That is worrying, of course. So as our dear viewers, she's encouraging you, and also we are encouraging you, in case you have those signs and symptoms we talked of, uh, the uh, lower abdominal pain, uh, the, in case you're a woman, you have started missing your periods, they are not coming in their uh, regular days. Uh, also, in case you're having uh, discharges from your private parts which are smelly or which has, is no longer normal, as she told us the normal one is supposed to be not smelling and also it is supposed to be not too thick. But in case you are infected and it is too thick and it's smelling, better rush to the hospital for early treatment to protect yourself and to protect your family uh, from transmitting this disease again among your, your spouse and also to protect your family in, as it will enable you to be able to produce more children to maintain and keep your family and the legacy. Thank you very much our dear viewers who have been with us from the start and as we're almost coming to the closing or to, as we're wrapping up uh, our doctor show. Maybe as we're wrapping up Madam Farida, some closing <laughs> remarks or some also key take home points for our viewers and also in case maybe our viewers have uh, issues of concern which are sexually related, where can they get you? Okay, so the, thank you so much for okay. this opportunity. Yes. So the take home points, one is anytime you get such signs and symptoms we talked about, always seek for medical attention. Avoid self medication because every time you use these drugs when they are not prescribed they also result into other complications then i'm i'm always at our referral because i practice from there most especially on the thursdays and fridays so maybe other people can get me through my contact or the email which i'll share then okay then i think that's all all right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Farida. Also, we are delighted to give in your time because we know people currently they are busy with their schedules, but we are grateful to you. You squeezed your time to come and educate our viewers outside there to get 
uh, knowledge and information on how to protect themselves from getting uh, sexually transmitted uh, diseases. Uh, it has been your host, Sunday Junior Tom, a student from Moni University doing my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing uh, in Yafo. Then this was the Dactari Show, your one-stop show where you get knowledge relating to health, uh, infections, diseases, on how you can protect yourself, on how you can prevent, or in case you are you, unlikely you get these diseases, on how you can be able to manage yourself, on how, where can you get the services to uh, help yourself or to treat yourself. It has been the Dactari Show here on Westnell TV and it always airs on Thursday from 10 a.m. and you can get us on Star Times 477 and Suku State Light 0073. Thank you very much our dear viewers who have been with us from the start and as we are coming to the wrap up uh, of the show. I wish you all the best in your day. Have a blessed morning, also a nice afternoon and a blessed day throughout. Thank you very much our dear viewers. Meet next time. Thank you.